What we have here is the first ever release in the entire world of Bernheim Barrel Proof. We're about to see what happens when somebody with a not-so-refined whiskey palate gets their hands on this and gets to pour a glass down their gullet. Hello and welcome to Lacorious George. My name is George and today I'm going to be guiding all of you through my curiosity with Bernheim Barrel Proof. Some of you may already be familiar with Bernheim's Wheat Whiskey. This release here, however, is the latest from Bernheim Distillery, which is owned by Heaven Hill. And they're taking the same whiskey, but bottling it at barrel proof instead of the normal 90 proof that the normal uh, offering is at. So unlike some of the other barrel proof offerings that Heaven Hill has that usually release three different batches throughout the year, uh, for the moment at least, Bernheim is releasing their barrel proof twice a year. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this is actually the first batch to hit the market. So Bernheim just released this earlier this year. So if we take a look at the batch number that's on the bottle there, you can see that it's batch A223, right? And so what does that tell us about being the first batch on the market? Well, it doesn't really tell us anything about being the first batch, but what it does tell us is a few different things. So the A within the batch number being A223, so the A means it's the first release of the year. So the batches go A, B, C as the year goes on. The second digit, number two, that means that it was released in February and 23 is the year. All right, so let's take a look at the rest of the stats on this bottle before we get to trying it. So we're looking at a proof of 118.8, so that's a 59.4% alcohol content. So we're looking pretty hot here, almost 60%. In terms of aging, this offering is aged between seven to nine years. So it's made up of a number of different whiskeys that can be aged anywhere in that range. Now, one thing that I happen to like about this whiskey already is they give us exactly what the mash bill is made up of. So I don't have to guess or go research at all. So score one for the transparency folks. So the mash bill is made up of 51% wheat, 37% corn, and 12% malted barley. That's enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and get to tasting this. All right, so first giving a little swirl and taking a look at the color of it. So we got a pretty darker brown color here, uh, almost a little reddish. So it's kind of like a deep bronze copper color almost. So maybe you can see it there on the thing. It does seem like it has a little bit of a reddish tint to it. That might just be my lighting in here, but again, it's what it looks like in the glass. Seems like it has a decent viscosity to it, maybe a little oiliness. So it'll be interesting to see what it's like on the palate. Well, let's take a smell and see what it is. All right, so I definitely right off the back get the that wheat kind of influence out of it. If you can imagine wheat, you use it in flour and stuff like that, it basically smells like a bakery in here right now. So definitely that bready smell. Yeah, I definitely say it smells like yeast in there. Just from, you know, when you smell it, it kind of smells like the bread, but you got a little bit of the pungent kind of smell. I think the, the pungency might be coming from the proof of the alcohol itself. But you're definitely getting the breadiness to it. And then you're getting some sweetness in there too. So I don't know really what kind of sweetness at this point. You know, again, it might just be kind of that bready smell, but almost like a sweet bread, maybe honey. Not really getting a lot of wood or oak out of it. Yeah, it is a nice nose though. You can definitely tell the proof on it that it's a little higher. Cause if I stick my nose a little bit deeper in there, you can definitely feel it, but it's not too, too bad. Yeah, the nose is definitely like a sweet bread. And yeah, maybe towards the end here, I'm getting a little bit of the spice coming through, but not too, too much. Yeah, so let's give this a taste. Let's see what it's like on the palate. Yeah, almost like a nice fresh baked roll that has some honey drizzled on the top or something like that. This is what it kind of reminds me of. So second taste on there, you can get a little bit more of the sweetness out of it, but the spices are coming through now too. Yeah, you're definitely getting some spice that comes through on this, but it's not like a normal, like a peppery spice. It's kind of a, it's like a baking spice, something more like a clove though, not like a cinnamon really. I'm getting more of a clove spice on that. Yeah, I'm really just getting more of that breadiness, you know, some sort of a yeast bread. So it's almost in my head, I'm picturing like a, like a yeasted bread roll, just a little honey on it, maybe sprinkle a little spices on the top. Like I said, clove, I don't know, can you get like sprinkle cloves? I don't even know how cloves come, but something along those lines, cause there's baking spices in here. But normally when I hear baking spices, I think like a cinnamon kind of a thing, but it's not cinnamon. It's more like a clove, it, you know what a clove smells like. But it's actually really good. It's pretty mellow too, considering it's almost 60%. Um, it's actually pretty mellow. And you know, the second and third sips. The first one came in a little hot. Second and third sips are, are fine. 
So I think after the first sip, it ends up being all right. And you know, it looked pretty viscous in the glass when you're giving it a spin and looking at it, but on the mouth, it actually goes away a little bit more than I thought it would. I thought it would be a little bit more oily and stick around. It is a little bit, but it's not too bad. You know, from the finish perspective, there is a little bit of, I'm getting a little bit of the dryness on the side of, you know, your tongue. I'm trying to think of the word there, like astringency, right? When you drink something, it's a little bit of astringency. Sometimes you get it with wine and things that are dry. The sides of your tongue kind of salivate a bit. I'm getting a little bit with this. So my mouth is getting a little bit of dry with it, but it's not too, too bad. It's not anything that makes it non-enjoyable. Just for fun here, I'm gonna add a couple of drops of water to see what it is. I was always told that if you're gonna taste it, taste it first and then add a couple of drops of water to see what happens. I don't have too, too much in my glass, so I'm only gonna add a couple. So let's see if this opens it up a bit. Yeah, honestly, the water I don't think does too, too much to the nose to make it any different. It just kind of, well, waters it down a bit. Maybe it's because I added it when there wasn't a whole lot in the glass there. I probably took a little too many sips before I added the water in there, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, so the nose is a little similar. It just seems a bit muted. Let's see on the palate. Oh, it opened the palate up a bit though. With a couple drops of water in that, I'm kind of getting like a maple syrupy kind of taste. Right, instead of the honey, I kind of get something a little bit different than that. I'm gonna say like a maple syrupy kind of a thing, but I still get the breadiness in there, still the same flavor profile. I think the sweetness just changed up a little bit. So overall, kind of final impressions here. I really like this. Um, I haven't had too many weeded whiskeys in the past, but I like it a lot. Um, you know, that, that mixture of the sweet bread kind of a thing. Um, maybe that kind of suits my palate a bit. It's also really smooth, which is nice, you know, even though it's almost 60% alcohol, um, it's pretty smooth from that regard. You know, I have had a few, um, you know, barrel proof cast strength whiskeys before, and it's actually pretty smooth compared to some of those. Uh, so it's nice, real nice mixture there of the, the sweetness, not a whole lot of spice to it. So if you're someone who's a big fan of, of spicy stuff, you know, might not be in your wheelhouse, but yeah, overall, I think for, you know, the 65 bucks or so that I think I paid and picked this up at, um, you know, for a barrel proof whiskey, if you're a fan, you know, I definitely think it's worth it. So I'd love to hear from you all in the comments. Have you been able to get your hands on this release yet? If you had it, tried it, what do you think? Throw a comment down there, let's start a conversation. Love to hear what you guys get out of it when you taste it yourselves. Also, if you've had the regular Bernheim and not the barrel proof, let me know what you think comparison wise. Is the barrel proof the same thing, just a little bit more intense, whatever, you know, I'm probably gonna have to pick up the original now so I can kind of do a taste test side by side. But regardless, I very much like this one, even though I started with the barrel proof, might not have been the best idea, but that's what I did. So let me know what you guys think. If you're lucky enough to see this out on the shelves, I'd say pick it up. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with it. Okay, I'm gonna have to finish this one up, but I'll see everybody next time. Um, in the meantime, stay curious and cheers.